Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on using Rolls inside Final Cut Pro 10. Rolls are new with the 1003 release, and they allow us to categorize, to organize our media within the timeline and to be able to find it again. Not just find it in the timeline, but find it in the event browser, even control how we export our projects. There's some really powerful features inside Rolls, which is what I want to show you today. What I want to cover today is to define what roles are, how to view and assign roles to a clip, how to create and modify roles and sub-roles, how to manage roles with the timeline index, and how to use roles to control audio exports. A role is a label, also called metadata, that is applied to every clip in a project or event to indicate its function. Roles are automatically assigned to every clip during media import but roles can be modified at any time after that clip has been imported. Roles can be used to organize clips in the event browser, determine what clips are displayed in the timeline, control what media is exported, and create stems or submixes of your audio during export. Here's some rules about roles. First, every clip is assigned one and only one role. Roles that are applied in the event browser are stored with the event. Modified or custom roles that are applied in the timeline are stored with the project. Roles are assigned to the entire clip, not a range within a clip or a range between clips. One role per clip. You cannot assign roles to a compound clip. Only the clips that are contained inside the compound clip can have roles. New roles and sub-roles can be created as many as you need, and effects and transitions are not assigned roles, only clips are assigned roles. Here, for instance, I have an event called Sound Effects. And as I scroll through here, I see I have a lot of different sound clips. Now, in this case, I've got about 12, not a huge number. But imagine I had a whole lot more. Wouldn't it be cool to be able to start to develop categories that would allow you to figure out what clip does what? Well, let's go to the gear menu and go down to Group Clips By. Everything from this line up, those top four, affect how events are displayed in the event library. These bottom two rows affect how clips are displayed in the event browser. This, by the way, is the event library, and this shows all the media related to a single event or the selected events in the event library, and that's called the event browser. I want to group clips in the event browser by roles. So I simply slide my mouse over on that gear menu, click on roles, and it opens up a new way of describing or categorizing, organizing our media. Notice it says dialog, and there's exactly one clip there. Taxi! Taxi! Thank you very much. Then I've got a bunch of effects clips. That, by the way, that is the exterior sound of space. And if you think about it, of course, there has to be space making noise. Actually, space doesn't make noise, but it isn't as dramatic. So we add space noise. And then we've got a music clip. Well, what I've just done is, rather than look at my clips in the aggregate, I can start to organize them by roles. And I can create more roles. We'll talk about that in just a minute. For instance here, if I wanted to see what role is applied to a clip, there's a number of places we could look. First, select the clip, go to the inspector. In the inspector, click on the Info tab and roll all the way to the top, and notice that it's been applied the Effects role. Remember, there's five roles, Video and Title for Video, Dialog, Music, and Effects for Audio. I could change the role also here by making sure the clip or clips are selected, clicking on this pop-up, and I could say change that to music, which in fact it is. So I'm going to change it to music. Now when I scroll down again, we'll hide the inspector. Notice that now I only have six clips in my effects category and two clips in a music category. I recategorized simply by changing the role on that clip. Now while it's entirely possible to change the role by going to the inspector, the info tab, and rolling around. I never use that. For me, it's much more efficient if I select my two clips to go up to the Modify menu. In the Modify menu, I can assign roles. And notice here, 
The video roles are grayed out. By the way, the B role is called a sub role. It's a sub category. It's one that I created. We'll talk more about that when we get down to the timeline. And I could say, let's change this music. Let's move it to dialogue. And now all of my music clips are gone and they show up. Now I've got three clips in dialogue, but they're really music. So I'll go back to modify and assign it back to the music category. I can assign or change roles on a single clip or all selected clips or any combination thereof. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library can save you money. You can access all of our videos for one low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 500 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. For more information, visit larryjordan.biz slash subscriptions. This has been an excerpt of our recent Power Up webinar on using roles inside Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz slash store. And look for Webinar 92.